so final topic or second final topic is like multilingual search. Um, so that's the most recent project I've been working on at, at Cohere to work on a multilingual uh, embedding approach. So far, the dominant method in search is like lexical search, BN25. But if you go and have like a multilingual data set, let's say you create like some platform. I don't know, you, you create Reddit, people post in all types of languages on Reddit or Twitter, and you want to provide like search function for all these languages. It's like really, really ugly to build this. First, you need to do language identification on docs and queries because every language needs a different tokenizer. So in English, you can just tokenize on white spaces and then indexes, but this does not work for Chinese. So for Chinese, you need a different tokenizer than for English and so on. Also stop word lists must be different. So in English, you have certain stop words, but these stop words are different for French, German, Chinese, Russian, Turkish, Arabic. Also what you often do is like stammer where you reduce words to the stem like docs, plural docs goes to doc. And this is also like language specific. So every document has like a different pipeline, different tokenizer, different stop words, different stammer. For every language, you need a different index. So you have an index with all the Arabic documents, all the Chinese documents, all the English documents. And then if I enter a search query, I first need to know what search, uh, what language is this query in. And this can also be challenging because there are words which it's like a beak. If you take the English word die, uh, in Germany, the word be written the same way as an article. So just from the word, you don't know what's the language. And so you don't know which index do I need to hit. <clears throat> do I have to search the English index or the German index? So you might need to query like multiple indices. And out of the box systems like Elasticsearch only support few languages because it's like really, really painful to create these tokenizer stop word stemma for every language. With multilingual embeddings, it's quite easy. So you take the model, uh, you take the text, pass it through a transformer network, you get an embedding out of it. You don't need to do any language identification. You don't need to have like any stemming, stop words and so on. So everything can be the same pipeline. But however, there have been previous work on multilingual embeddings, but a big challenge was the, the lack of training data. So what people did before is they used from the neural machine translation, um, community translated sentences uh, and trained models on this or aligned models, English models on this. But here we see that models only work well on the sentence level. <clears throat> Another line of research is like people use machine translation like Google Translate to translate query answer pairs to other languages. But here, the models don't learn language and country specific properties. So that people have been using MS Marco, which has like a lot of questions, how to do taxes in the US and how to file certain forms. And then translated this to German. So now the model knows in German how I could file my taxes in the US, but the model has absolutely no idea how to do taxes in Germany and how to file all the forms that's required in Germany to do my taxes. And as mentioned before, models are really bad in out of domain settings. So if I hit the model and ask some German specific question, how do I do, how do I file taxes or how do I get a tax refund? The model has like absolutely no idea how to do it and how to learn it. So what we did at Cohere, we say, okay, data is, is the key. So we collected large quantities of training data not from machine translation, but actually written by people of that language. So for example, Germans asking questions, how to file the taxes in Germany, together with the answers written from Germans, how to do the taxes or how to file certain forms in Germany. And overall, we close collected up to like 500 million non-English pairs, uh, which we carefully curated, cleaned, extended, augmented, and so on, which covers like a lot of different topics. And so we hope that the model is like really broadly applicable and can find relevant information across all these languages to minimize the gap we see in these models have on unknown words on unknown domains. 
And of course, we, we put it also to a test in different settings. Um, first was like clustering and search in English, search on non-English languages and cross-lingual classification where I have training data just in English. And I want to do classification in other languages. And here, the biggest improvement we saw for search in non-English where previous methods, they all work like on a sentence level. And here we see like a really big boost of performance on the non-English languages. And one approach, which is absolutely amazing with these embedding approaches is like cross-lingual search. So you can type the query in any of the hundred languages. So here it's Arabic. I'm not speaking Arabic. My colleague Amr was so kind to provide this, but he said, it's supposed to ask the question, what's the capital of the United States? It does. Yeah, you search the English Wikipedia on this, and obviously Elasticsearch has no idea what this Arabic garbage is. Uh, but if you do semantic search, it has like no idea, no problem to match this because this text is matched to, to a vector. The vector is really close to the English. What is the capital of the United States? And then you get the perfect match to like Washington DC is the capital of the United States. Interesting aspect here is in terms of like language bias if you create these models. So either some models, they have like a strong language bias, meaning they prefer certain language combinations. So for example, if you take the LABSE model, you see all the Russian points are in the left corner or the English points are in the right corner. For other models, it's more like mixed together and there's like no strong separation between languages. And the question is like, is language bias good or not, or not good? So side effects with language bias is that same language results are ranked higher just because of the language. So if I search what's the capital of the United States in Arabic, I preferably find Arabic search results in the multilingual corpus, even such that maybe the English hit is, is a better answer to my question. Um, but so, so you could think that a model without language bias is nicer, that it finds you the perfect document, the perfect information without language. But here the challenge becomes in things that are specific to languages, where languages are also really tightly coupled with countries. So for example, if I search in English for wedding in an image search system, I expect some happy picture like this. So you know, that's the traditional Western picture, how a wedding should look like, the, the bride in a white dress and the, the man in a smoking or suit, black suit, uh, white skin. If, I, if the model does not know about the language I'm searching in and I search in the Hindi word for wedding, sadly I'm not speaking Hindi, but Google Translate told me that's the Hindi word for wedding. And the, the vector spaces does not have like any information about the language. So it just sees the content in terms of wedding. It will retrieve the same result. And here it's like doubtful if people that search in Hindi for wedding would be really interested to get like a Western picture of a wedding. Pre presumably such person would be more interested to get like some weddings, how they are typically celebrated in India. Similar, who's the president? Here we assume Joe Biden links to, to president. But if you ask in, in French, who's the president? You probably are not so much interested in the US president, but you're probably more interested in the French president, or maybe, I don't know, you, you speak, there are a lot more French speaking countries. Maybe you're interested in, in, a, in the president of the respective countries. So there's the question like, how can we still preserve these country language specific properties if you don't have a language bias in your model.